My name is Steve. But I want to introduce you to a little girl named Gracie Vanderwall. Let's take a look. I'm Grace Vanderwall. I'm 12 years old and I love to sing. I live in New York with my mom, my dad, my sister, and my two dogs, which I love dearly. Hi, young lady. What is your name? Grace. Grace, you're a beautiful young lady, you know that? Thank you. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, 12. Are you excited to be here? It's crazy. <laughs> what are you going to sing? I'm singing in original. Really? Yes. What's it about? It's about me. <laughs> and other people at school behind you, supporting you? Most of my friends don't really know I sing. So they don't know you're here? No. You believe that you can win? Well, I mean, miracles can happen, so possibly. <laughs> Stage is yours. Good luck. song that I would expect a 12-year-old girl to write. I don't know my name. It's kind of sad, isn't it? You know, I don't know who I am. But then again, that's adolescence, isn't it? And maybe for a lot of us, that's just life. You know, it's important to know your name. It's also important for other people to know your name as well. And that means it's important for you to know other people's names as well. We're going to talk about that today. I'm Pastor Steve uh, welcome to St. Ansgar United Methodist Church. Uh, as far as announcements, anybody have any to lift up? Okay. Um, signing stalled? Or, no. I don't know. <laughs> I don't there's, a, there's an art project. There's an art project out in the fellowship hall that I'd like you all to be a part of, please. We have some uh, stoles for the confirmation kids that I'd like you to sign, and you'll see them on the tables out there. So thanks. All right. Any other announcements? Yes. Yes, the new uh, computer desk looks a little small to me, but <laughs> I'm sure it'll work fine. So, anything else? Well, let's stand for the call to worship. We come together to be in the presence of God. Our God puts joy in our hearts. Here we are, O Lord, we open our lives to you. And your mercy flood our spirits. Amen. 
Let's pass the peace to one another. He should have said, be nice to this guy, he lost his computer. That's your prayer concern. God, our Father, we come to you as children. Be with us as we learn to see one another with new eyes, hear one another with new hearts, and treat one another in a new way. Amen. Please be seated. Let's join together as we affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come before God in prayer, and we do have that response after each joy and concern. I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and you respond, hear our prayers. Uh, we've already heard Arlene's having knee surgery this week, so prayers for her. Lord, in your mercy. Anybody else have any joys or concerns to lift up? Good to hear. Prayers of thanks. Lord, in your mercy. Okay. I would like to have prayers for my cousin's family when my cousin died of a stroke from a paralegal for a car accident. Okay, prayers for your cousin family in, their, in the midst of their grief. Lord, in your mercy.
I've got a concern. My computer is gone. But the good news, I backed it up right before it quit. The bad news is the backup didn't work. <laughs> so that's a concern. But I'll be all right. I'm not my computer. It's all right. Lord, in your mercy. Anybody else? Any joys this week to lift up? No? Yes. Well, good. You found one. Yeah, Chrysler. <laughs> Chrysler. And my new computer's on the way, too. So we both turned out okay. Lord, in your mercy. And remember the people that have suffered from the tornadoes this week. Um, you know, a lot of deaths and injuries and damage and all that. So, Lord, in your mercy. Okay, let's bow our heads and pray. Oh, Lord God. We give thanks and praise to you for the gift of this day. And, and we not only come to, to praise and give thanks to you, but we also praise you for the presence of these people around us, our church friends, our brothers and sisters in Christ, those who have shared our joys and shared our, our burdens over the years, who have shared so many experiences along the journey of faith. Lord God, we give thanks for each and every one of them. Pray for your, your blessings upon them. We ask you to hear their prayers as they lift up their, their joys and their con concerns. And Lord God, help us to look at the other people around us who, who we might not know as well, not only here in the church, but around the community and our neighborhoods. Remind us that how good it would be for them to be a part of this family. We know that sometimes people don't always feel comfortable coming to church for that first time and so we pray that we would all work together to make St. Dansgar United Methodist Church a place where they feel at home, a place where they feel welcome, a place where they feel known and honored. We lift up all those who have concerns this week, those whom we've named before you, and those who we name in our hearts. We also have our own burdens that we carry today, and, and you know what they are, and we lift those up to you as well. But help us not to allow the concerns of life to overshadow the joy of life. Help us to take some time today to, to look at our blessings and to give thanks to you. All these things we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we invite any kids who'd like to come down for a little time at Chippy. Come forward now. Uh, good morning, good morning. Uh, got a letter this week, a letter from an old friend. From our favorite old neighbors. Remember them? Which ones? Let, the donut lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The banana donut lady, that's right. I brought it, and I'll read it to you. Dear Steve, Janet, and family. Well, you and the kids, yeah. It's been a long time, but we want you to know we haven't forgotten about you and your family. We are doing, it fi doing fine except for my gums and some arthritis and those squirrels in the backyard. And have you seen the price of mangoes lately? That's if you can find any. We blame it on COVID. Maybe we'll stop by sometime. And we can talk about all, <clears throat> excuse me, about all this love, you know who. I, I found their pictures. Can we show the pictures? <clears throat> These are old neighbors. 
And it says, uh, P.S., please tell Chirpy that we love him and think of him often. Well, she put Chirpy. Well, Chippy is not that common of a name. He says, oh, and Chirpy is. No, but still, I mean, but you don't always get it right either. Sometimes you forget names, just not that. Said something to you, and I said, Who said it? You know, I don't know their name. But everybody should know your name. Well, it's been a long time. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know, but I do know somebody doesn't forget your name. In the book of Isaiah, in the Bible, it has this verse. It's up on the screen. And God says, but Now, thus says the God knows each and one, every one of our names. He knows us through and through, knows who we are, what we're like, uh, knows the wonderful things about us and the not-so-wonderful things about us. <laughs> and he knows our name. That's right. We can be thankful for that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, should we have... Should we have a song to go with Let's bow our heads and pray. Oh, Lord God, help us to remember that even though the people around us might not know us as well as we like, even though they might forget our name and who we are. You never do. Lord God, we thank and praise you that you love us so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing together, His Eye is on the Sparrow.
Let's join together in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Good morning. Our first scripture is Mark 10, 46 through 52 in the NSRB. <clears throat> they came to Jericho, and as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. And Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Our second scripture reading is from Luke 18, 35 through 43 from the NRSV. As he approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. And when he heard a crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Then he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who were in front sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he shouted even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came here near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him, glorifying God, and all the people, when they saw it, they praised God. Anybody ever hear this before? Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see. The troubles are all the same. You want to be where everybody knows your name. There's actually more verses to that song. All those nights when you've got no lights, the check is in the mail, and your little angel hung the cat up by the tail, and your third fiancé didn't show. Sometimes you want to go, then the chorus. And then roll out of bed, Mr. Coffee's dead, the morning's looking bright, and your shrink ran off to Europe and didn't even write, and your husband wants to be a girl. Be glad there's one place in the world where everybody knows your name, and they're always glad you came. You want to go where people know people are all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. Have you heard that song before? Any Cheers fans there? Shame on you. You're Methodist. You're not supposed to like shows about bars. That's one of my favorite shows. So, you know, I, I, for a long time I've had a summer sermon series uh, on a variety of different topics. Uh, when the movie on Mr. Rogers came out a few years ago, the topic that summer was, Won't You Be My Neighbor? Also, uh, favorite scriptures, inviting congregation members to share their favorite scriptures and some of mine. Odd scriptures. There's some parts in the Bible when you read them and you think, that's in the Bible? It is. We just don't notice it. And one of my favorites 
was a summer series by the name of A Pastor Walks Into a Bar. Mixed reviews. I got mixed reviews that summer. A lot of mixed reviews. But, you know, I just kind of looked at a lot of things. You know, I, I read books about uh, the topic. I visited the bars in my hometown. It's not my typical hangout, but it went in there. Um, and for those of you, some of the topics we covered, for those of you that uh, aren't familiar with Methodist history, uh, when John Wesley was alive, it was during the beginning of the uh, Industrial Revolution in England. And you had a lot of people moving from the countryside and the small villages where their families had grown up for years, moved into the big cities, and it was overcrowded, and the work environment was not that great, and there was the availability of cheap gin. And alcoholism ran rampant during that time, and so early Methodists took a stand against alcohol, and it kind of trickles down to us today. So we looked at that. We looked at how other traditions handle that. We looked at what the Bible says about it. And it's interesting. There's kind of both sides on that as well. Um, and we talked about what are people looking for that hang out at bars. And it turns out, guess what? They're looking for some of the same stuff that we're looking for here at church. Now, interesting parallel. There's a parallel between the decline of the neighborhood church and the decline of the neighborhood bar. And it's a sociological thing. It's, it's a, a failure of, of neighborhoods and communities. You think about one time, everybody used to sit out on their front porch in the evenings. Now they got a deck on the backyard if they use that, but probably they're inside doing what in the evenings? Watching TV, enjoying the air conditioning, right? And so that's kind of interesting, those parallels. Which brings us back, be glad there's one place in the world where everybody knows your name and they're always glad you came. You want to know where pe go where people know, people are all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. It's too bad that song is about a bar instead of the church, isn't it? You know, if you notice, we had two scripture readings this morning. Was anybody sitting out there thinking to yourself, didn't we just read that? Call it gospel parallel, a gospel parallel. You look at the first three gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, often called the synoptic gospels among scholarly circles. They, they share a lot of material. And the theory is that you have three uh, people who brought together these accounts of Jesus' life, and uh, they had some common sources that they used. Each one had some stories that they brought into their edition. They couldn't share all the stories about Jesus, so they had to pick and choose. And then you have some stories that are shared between the Gospels. And that's the case of today's scripture. It's a good example of what they call a gospel parallel. Two stories, they're the same basic story, just a little bit, a little bit different. Uh, there's one obvious difference. Did anybody pick up the difference between the first and the second reading? What was it? name was in the first one. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. The name was in there. You know, it'd be interesting, talk about summer series, you could do a series on names in the Bible. You start out in Genesis 12, where this guy, Abram, and his wife, Sarai, they, they have a visit. God makes a covenant with them. And a few chapters later, what does God do? Changes their name. Abram to Abraham, from Sarai to Sarah. A couple generations later, you have Jacob, their grandson. God changes his name from Jacob to Israel. And other places as well. You think about Moses, when he is up on the mountain, uh, getting called by God to go down into Egypt. What does he want to know about God? What does the name mean? Because the name means something. It means something. Uh, later on, you get in the New Testament. How does, does the New Testament, Testament begin? With a whole bunch of names in Matthew. The genealogy of Jesus. Jesus changes Simon's name to Peter. Paul's letters. At the end of most of his letters, there's all these names. All these names. And that all means something. Names are very important in the Bible. And so why would Mark include Bartimaeus' name where Luke didn't. 
Because a lot of scholars feel like Mark came first and then Luke came a little while later. Well, here's what they think the story is. Mark being very was written for the Jewish community. It was still centered there around Jerusalem, and so Mark wrote his account of Jesus' life for those people. You have a lot of references to the Jewish traditions, which I go in and out all the time. I'm okay. Yes, you're okay too. <laughs> I know your name. So you think about that. Mark was writing to kind of a closer neighborhood. And when he was writing, he realized that a lot of his audience had either known Bartimaeus and his son Timaeus or heard of him. That makes sense, doesn't it? So of course you'd include his name. Luke, written much later, he wrote his works at a time when the church was starting to spread throughout the Roman Empire. And actually, Luke is part of a two-part work. You have the gospel according to Luke, and that continues in the book of Acts. They're both written by Luke to Theophilus. If you look closely, they're part of the same book. And so these people in Rome, they don't know who Bartimaeus is. They don't know who Timaeus is, so it's simply a blind beggar. It's just kind of interesting. I think I probably told some of you before. How many of you have ever eaten at Pasta Bell in Mason City? Okay, something to look for. I haven't told you already. When you go into Pasta Bella, you have the uh, stand where the host or hostess uh, is positioned and takes your name, stuff like that. If you look on the wall behind that, there's a sign, and it says, Reserved Parking, Bob and Steve. That's me. I think Bob and I gave that sign to them. They opened up a new location. They stuck it up on the wall. And I went out to people. You know, a lot of people just want to get their picture taken with me when they find that out. <laughs> anyway, that means something. You know, that's kind of a sign of friendship, right? Sign of friendship. You know, we had this neighbor, this family moved in across the street from us when we lived in Mason City before. They had two boys, Logan and Levi, little boys. Now, Levi was probably three and a half or four when he, they moved in. And, uh, and we just had the, the best neighborhood. Everybody knew each other, so this new family came in. And uh, so I wanted Logan and Levi to learn my name. So Logan picked it right up. Levi did not. So that whole first summer, whenever we were outside and I saw Levi, I'd say, hey, Levi, what's my name? And he would yell back, I don't know. <laughs> all summer, all summer. Kept at it, kept at it. And then finally, at the end of the summer, he started to say, last time we went back there visiting, uh, the boys all came over and it was just a wonderful neighborhood when it came to kids. You know, I think a lot of us are like Levi, aren't we? I don't know. Just don't ask, right? How many of you are lousy at remembering people's names? Anybody? Does that make you nervous? Ever make you nervous when you should know somebody's name and you don't, and you're afraid it's going to come up and you're going to have to admit you don't know their name? And for Janet and I, we're getting into the uncomfortable, scary part of this whole arrangement we have with St. Ansgar and Osage because we should be picking up names by now. And I'm afraid you're going to think we know your name, but we don't. Just being honest. Just being honest. You know, so what do you do? Think about the, the sign. Oh, how good I feel when I see my name up there and I can see me up there. I bet Bartimaeus felt the same way when he was reading the gospel according to Mark. You know, or when other people were reading it. You know, and Bartimaeus could say, that's me. That's me. You know, I'm not just a blind beggar. I mean something. People of my church, my faith community, they know who I am. They know my name. I think that's why Mark included it. You know, just to, to reaffirm that sense of community that they have with their brother Bartimaeus. You know, I read a book a while back. It's called My Name is Scott. And uh, Scott and another friend, they were in a college seminar together. 
and they were required to wear name tags, you know, through the whole thing. And so this friend and Scott decided to do an experiment. And they wondered what happen, would happen if we kept our name tags on and then went out for the evening. And so that's what they did. I think they went to a nice shop or something and they found something very interesting. Of course, what do you assume when you see somebody in a place like that with a name tag on? Somebody forgot to take their name tag off, right? So they got ribbed a lot about that. But they had an so, oh, back up. So they, he decided, Scott decided, oh, well, I'm going to wear a name tag all the time. In fact, he wrote a book. My name is Scott. I wear a name tag because it makes people friendlier and more sociable, and it helps them remember my name. Because when they think of me, they think of me. Remember my name, a quick and easy visual stimulus, such as a name tag, eliminates their insecurity, like we talked about before. to hear is their own name. So I get to hear my name more, introduce myself to new people, they hear their name more because they know your name, they tell you their name as well. Thus creating a friendlier society. Isn't that kind of interesting? We're a name tag all the time everywhere. Well, does learning names make a difference? of a brand new coronary stent. You know, in the Widowmaker, I was 80 to 85% blocked. And after I got my stent, I went through rehab. And that was one of the most depressing experiences I ever had. There I was, dealing with the fact that I had coronary artery disease. And our youngest person, that's the first person. After a couple of days of that, it's kind of like God gave me a kick in the pants and said, you can mope around about it or you can make the best of it. Because there's other people in that room that felt just as lousy as I did about it. And so I decided I'm going to learn their names. When somebody new comes in, I'm going to pay attention to their name, right? Because a lot of times we don't even listen, right? They say their name and it's gone. I'm going to pay attention, strike up a conversation and get to know these new people as we walked around and warmed up in the room. It changed, I don't know how it did for them, but it sure changed my attitude a lot. It made a big difference. You know, the whole Levi thing, you know, that's it made a difference in my relationship with young Levi. So you think about churches. Churches are like families. And uh, there was a day when neighborhoods were closer. You know, you knew everybody in town practically. And you go to church and everybody knew your name. And you knew about everybody else's name. Used to be. You know, back in we had to stop passing around the registration pads, right? And what did we do? We started having sign ups, and somebody is back there, you know, checking off names. I found that it's really hard to get somebody in Charles City to check off names. Why? They had to admit they didn't know some of these people's names. They'd been going to church with them, waving and everything for years, but they they never learned their name. Interesting. So some practical things. How can we help each other learn each other's names and have them learn our name? Several things. You know, name tags. Did anybody notice my name tag today? Name tags are a good thing. Um, and a lot of people hate name tags. And here's what you hear when you suggest name tags. Half the people, half of you people will say, I don't need a name tag. Everybody knows me here. They know who I am. Well... Maybe they do or maybe they don't. Maybe they should, but they don't. And what about the new people that don't know anybody's name? You know, what's the message that that sends to them if you don't have them? You know, friendly churches have to do more than just say, you're welcome to our church and we're glad to have you here and please come back and all that. You have to get to know the people that come in and let them get to know you. And I think the best sign to somebody new coming in that you want them to be part of your church family, you want to get to know them, you want them to get to know you is just a name tag. You know, another possibility outside of name tags is the uh, picture directory. You know, churches used to do that every four or six years and people would could refer to that. And 
What's the trouble with picture directories? Two. Two problems. One, they're out of date by the time you get them in your hand. And the other problem is everybody gets all dressed up and cleaned up and gets their picture taken. You can't recognize them. By the time Janet got done putting on all the makeup, nobody recognized me. Anyway. And so we did visit a church that had what I thought was a great answer to this. Instead of a picture directory, they had a bulletin board and they had people's pictures and names there. And they were pictures that they took on a Sunday morning. So it's as they are. They could update them anytime. They could add new people anytime. That's pretty smart. You know, if you want people to know your church community, to know you, and if you want to get to know them, have a bulletin board and you could kind of sleep over and look before church so you could be ready, right? And if you wanted to work on, and to me, that's a good thing. If you pick out, okay, I, I need to learn their name. With cell phones, you could take the picture of the picture and you could work on remembering their name. Because most of us are like Levi. We're not going to get it right away, right? Hmm. When I grew up, where I grew up, we had what we called the farmer's wave. Does anybody know what the farmer's wave is? You're driving down a country road or something, and you just... To everybody, right? You just do it. You want to be sure to use two fingers just to clear up any misunderstandings. Two fingers. That's just what everybody did. You could tell from the name. Farmer's wave. Well, today a farmer's wave isn't going to cut it anymore. You know, especially in church. Waving, smiling, uh, saying here. We got to do more than that because we live in a of community is falling apart. The sense of being neighbors, the sense of the church family. You know, we, we've started to cocoon way too much. Uh, we don't introduce ourselves because we're afraid we're going if we introduce ourselves, we're going to have to remember their name, you know, things like that. And we've got to turn that around. People are going to be looking for a place where they feel like they belong, a place where they feel like people know them and love them, and love them a place where People know their name. Be glad there's one place in the world where everybody knows your name and they're always glad you came. You want to go where people know people are all the same. You want to go where everyone knows your name. A healthy kind of a place where you walk in, people are glad you're here. They want to get to know you. You want them to get to know you and everybody knows your name. Let's bow our heads and pray. Uh, Lord God, we all have names. You created us, you know us, you claim us as your own. We're not just blind beggars along the side of the road. We have names, you know our name. And Jesus invites us not only to remember who we are, to, but to remember the people around us as well. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Remember the saying, a few seeds makes a small harvest, but a lot of seeds make a big harvest. Each of you must make up your own mind about how much to give. But don't feel sorry that you must give, and don't feel that you are forced to give. God loves people who love to give. God can bless you with everything you need, and you always will always have more than enough to do all kinds of good things for others. You know, the offering plate is in the back of the church. Let's pause and reflect upon our giving.
dedicate our offerings. Lord, because you love a cheerful giver, may we have a cheerful spirit as we make our offerings to you. Accept these gifts and we gladly devote to the service of Christ in his church. Amen. Let's sing together. tag you know you're probably admiring this name tag wondering where you can get one this is a professional model name tag the amateur models are much smaller than this so just keep that in mind when you're looking <laughs> may your faith give you peace and may god's spirit give you love may the grace of god give you hope may the love of christ give you strength amen